Hello and welcome to Mile High Rangers. I'm Scott Anderson and today I'm going to show you how I made my DIY light rack for my Giesman LED lights. I chose to go with the DIY light rack instead of a prepared kit because I have a hood. I love my hood. It looks great on the tank and it helps keep my fish in. And when you're sitting there watching the tank, it's really nice having the hood block the light instead of having that real bright strip of light in your eyes. So that's what I like. But the prepared kits don't work well with the hood. There's two types that I saw. One allows you to hang the light from the ceiling and the other clamps to the back of the tank and suspends the light over the tank. But neither one of those will work with the hood, so I had to come up with my own thing. And in doing so, I was able to kind of design it the way I want. So the criteria I gave myself was, I want it to be modular so that in the future if I want to add a light, I can do that. And I wanted it to be adjustable. I really want to be able to move my lights left, right, forwards, back, all that as much as possible. So I'm going to build so, a bracket to hold my lights in place. I looked at the kits that are made for it and none of them were going to work inside my aquarium hood. I'd really like to leave that hood on just because I like the aesthetics of it. Um, I think it looks nice and that's really what I want. So what I've purchased to make my bra to make the bracket to hold the light in place are two pieces of 48 inch bar steel and one 36 inch piece. And then the way it's going to work is each piece of bar stool steel is going to go into the slots on the light. You can see they're built in there. And then I'll cut this other piece down and that'll make my end connection across here. So it'll come across here like that. And then I'll use my L brackets to drill holes and hold the whole thing together. And it's going to be done at each of the corners. And since this is bar steel, I'm hoping to not have any flexing or any issues with that. It should be plenty strong. Um, so the idea being, if I do this right, I'll be able to adjust the lights sideways and then back and forth inside the hood. So it should be incredibly strong, fully adjustable, and it should be a lot better than anything else I could buy. Now, to do all this, I told you about the steel. I had to buy a blade for my chop saw to cut the steel. I had to buy L bracket. There's eight of them. I'm gonna put one on each side. And then I went ahead and bought a box of screws and nuts. Um, the only thing I'm not liking about the screws and nuts is they're not gonna mount flush. But just given what I have to work with, um, that's the best I can do right now. Um, there are better ways. I just don't have um, the time, the tools, and the skills to do it. And then, obviously, steel rust. So I bought some Rust-Oleum appliance epoxy paint. So I'm hoping that since this is epoxy, it's going to give it a plastic coating and do a really nice job of protecting all of the metal parts from rust. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out my metal so that I can get it cut across here and then I'm going to assemble. Alright, now that everything's cut, I've kind of roughly assembled it and then I'm going to go ahead and put my bracket on and mark the holes. So I've just got to I'll just line it up the very best I can. And then mark it off with a sharpie. And that way I can put the L bracket on each side. I'll take this out to the drill press and then it'll be an L bracket on both sides of this. So there's a little better view of the corner. Just line the L bracket up, take the sharpie each hole, and then I've got holes that I can go take to the drill press and drill. So I'll go drill those out, see how it looks. So here's my bracket. I am stoked. This thing is as good as I thought it was gonna turn out. So I went ahead and I bolted everything together. I've got the L brackets on all four corners on both sides, and now, I've got my lights in, and this thing's freaking awesome. Because the lights have these channels in here, they don't come out of the bracket itself, so they, there's no risk of this thing falling in the water. 
but each light is fully adjustable over the tank anywhere I like it. It just slides along the rail. So that's that's huge to me because I want to be able to I want to be able to adjust my lights. If I want to pull it one way or the other, I want the ability to do that. Um, it's also something I probably decide I really need more light. I've got enough room, I can add a third light to this bracket, no worries. And then with my tank, of course, I'll have the option of sliding this forwards and backwards to adjust the light. So I am super, super happy with the way this turns out. So this isn't, this isn't painted. I'm going to go ahead and paint this up, um, but I had to do my test assembly, and I am really, 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 really happy with this thing. Um, I think it's going to be fantastic on my aquarium. On my aquarium, on each end, I have one by twos right now that hold the current metal halide up. I might have to raise those up just to keep this far enough above the water, but otherwise, I think this is just going to drop right in and be perfect when I lift it. I'll try it from the other side. And forgive me if I'm a mess, but I've been working all day. When I lift it, there's no twist motion, nothing. So this thing is going to be just just perfect for what I want to do. Sitting on my tank, I'll have full adjustability, and um, I'm really happy. So I'm going to paint it up, and we'll install it. Here up. it is, completely painted up. There's about three coats of the epoxy appliance paint on here. Um, what I have to do now is take these four bolts off, and then I can slide the lights in. I'm assuming when I pull those bolts off, I'm going to chip the paint and I'll have to go ahead and slide the lights back in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There it is, lights are installed. So I'm going to go ahead and silicone up these ends that hold it. Probably run a bead along each of these sides to make sure water doesn't get in any of this. And then it's ready to go on the tank, but now I can move each of the lights, forwards, backwards, independently of each other, and then the whole frame can move back and forth in the tank. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The only thing I don't like is that I had to paint it, and then when I move that, I'm noticing when I move the light a little bit, it's scraping up the paint, which isn't going to be good for corrosion projection. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really worried about corrosion protection here because. This is steel and it's going to rust. All of these bolts and the brackets were zinc coated, but I don't think that's going to stand up to salt water for very long. Um, so what I ended up noticing was there's lots of cracks along the edges that water could get in. And I'm sure the paint wasn't good enough to hold it. And then on the ends here, they were hollow because obviously it's a hollow bar stock. So <clears throat> I know it's ugly, but what I decided to do was to put a bunch of basically bathroom sealant around there in black so that it covers every one of those holes so that the water can't get in. I also filled the corners here so water can't get in there and rust it out from the inside. But I'm really just wanting to keep this thing lasting as long as possible. Um, with the salt water being so corrosive, it's going to destroy steel in a very short time. So. It's ugly, but it's going to be inside my hood, so you'll never notice it unless you actually open the hood and look inside. So this is definitely where I'm emphasizing function over form. Obviously, it's not professional looking, but it's not a professional project. This is just something to keep my lights going. Um, if it was more of a professional project, it shouldn't be made out of steel. It should be made out of something better. But these are the tools I have available to me, so I have to kind of make compromises. So I'm going to go ahead and install this on the tank and we'll see. All right, how it so here's the Teslas with the mounting brackets mounted up on the tank. And all in all, I think they're going to work out really well. They're actually on right now and I've got a pretty good light spread. Um, forgive the fact that the tank is dirty right now. I just cleaned under that center glass support panel, but it all looks pretty good. Um, I'm really liking it because I can adjust the bar back and forth to adjust the light. I still need to screw these in, but everybody in my household is asleep right now, so I am not whipping out any power tools right now. And then I can also adjust each light 
back and forth individually. So, so far so good. The other thing is with the slim profile, I'm able to lift this significantly further off the water than I could with my um, metal halides. So I think I might have been a little overly cautious with the waterproofing on here, but better safe than sorry. I think it's going to work out extremely well. I am really happy with it. So after seeing everything, the only thing I would do differently is I wouldn't actually put the silicone all over the outside. It sits up far enough, I don't think it's going to get a lot of water on there. It would still get a little, but I think a coat of paint probably would have done the job. Um, so it's a little uglier than I would have liked, but otherwise it worked out really well. So, thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and if you like what I do, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.